welcome again to Women to Women Wednesdays with me, Pam, your host. Today, I am super excited. I have Jen Cassetta sitting with me here today. She is a global international public speaker, soon to be author. She's a, a self-defense expert, just basically all around badass. And that's why she's here to talk with us today. So welcome, Jen. Thank you so much, Pam, for having me. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming on. Well, let's jump straight into it. So the goal of this YouTube um, episode is to just m- have it quick and simple. And for anyone who wants to jump into it and into the area that you're in, they can just learn how you did it and be inspired. So with all that in mind, you wear many successful hats. Can you tell us a little bit how it all started off and how did it morph into all these paths? Absolutely. Um so- It feels like such a long journey, Pam. So it's funny that you say like anyone that just wants to jump into it. I'm like, what? (laughs) Exactly. Right. Because it's never that easy. (laughs) Oh gosh, It's never that easy. It's never as easy as it looks, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. Right. Um, My journey started with a martial arts class, believe it or not, back in the year 2000. So it'll be 20 something years ago that I just fell in love with martial arts. I loved how it made me feel what I was learning. And in that same year or about a year into my training, um, a huge event shifted the course of my life. It was September 11, 2001. And we're about to come on to the 20 year anniversary now, um, which is mind blowing, um, which is kind of where it all started for me. So on that morning, I showed up to work. I was an event planner. That's where I thought my my um, post-college career was heading. And instead, I got out of the subway, realized that the World Trade Center was on fire, still had no idea what was going on, but made it to my place of work. There, the doorman wouldn't let me upstairs, wouldn't let me go to work. And I just still was baffled, confused, didn't know what to do. So he let me in the, in the lobby where I started to call my mom. And within the first minute of speaking to her, the first tower fell and a ton of people just bum rushed the lobby for safety. And I got thrown into a closet with a bunch of strangers. And for the first time in my life, felt like I was going to die. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. And my body kind of froze. I remember crying, but couldn't really move. And this woman came up to me and took me by the shoulders and kind of shook me and was like, what's your name? Jennifer. And she's like, Jennifer, I'm Nancy. And you and I were going to get out of here today. So to make a long story short, we ran through the ashes covered in soot from building to building to building to get shelter. And finally, hours later, I actually took Nancy to the martial arts school that I was training at. Um, yeah, for that day, you know, for that, the first time that day I was able to breathe and relax and feel safe. And I think that feeling of safety really like anchored into my body because for the next six months, all I wanted to do was go to that school and train and start learning how to become stronger, more confident, spiritually more grounded, um, you know, in this mind, body, spirit, holistic training system that really martial arts is right. So Looking back, I know it saved me from PTSD, but looking back, I also realized how um, pivotal pivotal that experience was for me in shaping the next stage of my career, which was then a whole other journey. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm listening here and I have goosebumps and I'm trying to emotionally hold it together here myself. Um, Wow. A journey. It's a journey. Yes. safety in all aspects. Right. (sighs) Which then I wanted to help other people find. So, um, I became a personal trainer, a health coach, went back to school to get a nutrition degree all while training in that martial art, which is a martial art called Hapkido. It's a Korean style. And, um, and yeah, figured this is what I kind of want to impart for others, feeling strong, safe, powerful, uh, so that took many iterations and then came out to the West coast about 10 years after that with my third degree black belt Mm -hmm. and then started, um, kind of thinking like, how can I get this word to more than just one to one, you know, one-to-one training? How can I spread the message? How can I grow my platform essentially? 
And that's when I started to think about speaking, public speaking, and bringing it to colleges and corporations, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I love that. And did you at some point think about maybe the, maybe even opening up like a dojo or your own little center? Or did you just know that you were here to just travel and meet and spread the love and the word? Ditto. Uh, I mean... Yeah. The second, the first, never, never, never. I never wanted my own space. I feel like, and if anyone out there does, I get it because it, it does sound lovely to have your own space, to welcome people into your own space. But I love traveling. I love um, getting out there. And I also saw my martial arts school just struggle to pay bills and the rent in New York city. And I just, no, <laughs> nothing about that appealed to me. Um, right. And I also didn't want to pigeonhole myself into a martial arts instructor because of this, this dream of speaking, public speaking. And that is another story. But really quickly, it started in a Tony Robbins seminar when I was in my 20s, like watching this oh. person larger than life up on stage and moving people to their feet and transforming them in front of your face. It was like, so powerful that I felt like if I could just do that this much in my life, that I would be really happy. Well, I think you're there and you're doing way more than this <laughs> much. So thank you for continuing to spread the word there. And, and just kind of, I, I, it makes sense now at first I was thinking, why not a dojo, but you're innovative with your thoughts here. It's that you're utilizing your experience and the discipline and the teachings in a sense to really utilize that to kind of build a path, kind of like a tool so you can connect with everyone else around the world. Is that kind of where I'm going with there? Spot, <laughs> okay. on, spot on. My martial arts is my martial arts training comes out in everything that I do. Every speech that I write, every program that I teach, it's part of everything. It's part of who I've become. It's helped shape me into a leader and a speaker and whatever else it is that I do, a coach. Um, but I it's not, you know, it doesn't confine me to a four walled um, space. Yeah. I, I love that because I think that's your passion right there. And, and you challenge yourself to be creative in, in many different angles. So with that in mind, I know you have lots of lessons that you've learned, but if we can just think of maybe a top, maybe one of the top lessons you've learned um, in your uh, years on earth here is what can you impart with, with anyone who's just trying to kind of figure out what they want to do in life, or maybe to feel safe, like you said, in their own space. Mm -hmm. So one thing, a lesson that maybe you've learned that you'd like to save others from. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it's one thing, but it's a big thing and it can have like many different <laughs> sub lessons, if you will, <laughs> but <laughs> But it's essentially when I go out there to speak to anybody, whether it be a crew chapter, um, real estate board, um, you know, women at a corporation, it's always just to remind people, to remind you that all the power you need, all the answers you need, all the confidence you need, it's already within you. And all you need are the tools and the practice at tapping inside it and letting it out, right? Unleashing that into the world. I feel like, especially women, we search, especially, you know, we go through different um, decades of our lives or periods of our lives where we search for our power in different places. And maybe some of us look at a scale and can't find the power there. And then right. later on, it's like in an anti-aging beauty cream and there's no power there. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we especially when you're younger, you look for it in relationships, um, you know, in your partner, and that's not sustainable either. So again, like I've taken it on as my job just to remind people that it's already there, right? And it's just like building a muscle, being able to tap into it with many different, many different ways. And that's where my art of badassery talk comes in. I walk people through all those different ways of tapping into that confidence, remembering that power, um, asking yourself questions to get the right answers to then um, unleash your inner badass. 
Oh, I love that. Well, let, let's talk about it more, actually. So how do you structure those workshops or the the teaching seminars that you have on the art of badassery? Can mm-hmm. you give us a little, a little quick glimpse into that? Yeah. So, um, so I use martial arts as a metaphor. Like you said, it comes with me into everything that I, that I teach and speak about, but, um, essentially without giving the whole thing away, because it's a book, it's turning into a book right now. Um, Writing. the first section is really about building resilience and looking back onto your life, not with disdain and regret and, uh, sadness and victimhood, but looking at it and actually just bowing to it and honoring your journey to where you are right now. Um, because all of those challenges, all of those horrible things that have happened or you've done, or you failed at, they're all there, I think as a purpose to serve you up and kind of chisel you into this stronger, more powerful version of yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. and people that can really embrace that will go so far in their lives. Like I truly, truly believe that. The ones who stick in kind of poor me, why me, why did this happen to me? You just get stuck. Right. And so you're here to help those people as well to kind of see the light within them. This is great. And you mentioned that your book is coming out too. So when, um, when are we planning to see your book or when can we see your book? <laughs> yeah, um, it's going to be a year from now. So now is like end of August. So essentially a year away, anyone that knows traditional publishing um, can relate that these things take forever. <laughs> All right, guys. So mark your calendars, keep it in mind. Her book is coming out. It's going to be sometime in 2022. There, yes. so at least we have it sometime next year, and that will be very exciting. You guys will learn tips, um, tools from from Jennifer. She'll help you, and obviously, you can always go to her website too. So, what is your website if people want to find you? Yep, website is my name, jennifercassetta.com. That's two N's, two S's, two T's. Well said there. That's that was pretty quick. I guess you get a lot of questions on how to spell it. So that's great. Okay, yeah. so back to you know being in the special kind of uh, niche in your industry here. Um, what do you think was one of the biggest challenges that you faced? Um, well, funny, it might be a self-imposed challenge to be honest. Now that because the, the first thing that popped up in my mind was this that I'm I've never had a job in corporate America. I've essentially been an entrepreneur since I started when I was 25, right? When I lost my job as an event planner, I went out on my own and have been coaching ever since and speaking and doing all these different things. So, um, so as a speaker, right, I'm speaking to usually women in corporate, corporate corporations, organizations. Um, So again, I think this is a self-imposed limit that I always feel like, oh, I don't speak the speak, the corporate speak, or, you know, it's hard to be as the outsider, you have to find the right people that want to hear your message. So I've just been navigating this. I guess that's a challenge um, this whole time, right? And figuring it out myself. There is no mentor. There's no boss. There's no one to kind of tell me what to do. You just have to figure it out as you go along. (laughs) And I love that about you because you're paving your own way. And I think that's a message in itself for everyone out there listening is that it's okay that you might not have some guidelines or you might not have a mentor, but if you just follow what's in your heart and your mind, you will get there. So I think you're doing a great job, which is why I'm so honored to have you here um, today. So, all right, well then let me shift gears. Let me end with this of like, um, who inspires you to be like a better person? I know you're a great person already, but I can tell you're a goal setter and you also work towards long-term visions, but is there someone in mind who inspires you? I mean, there are so many, right? Um, the people that come to my mind are authors, um, people that I've done say like seminars with. So like the Tony Robbins of the, and I know that's not always the most popular people right now, um, these like big kind of larger than life seminar leaders, but they were pivotal in my, my self-development and personal development. Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's now passed away. I actually just did a reel with my seven top 
spiritual growth books. And I realized that six out of the seven were men. And I was like, wow, except for Marianne Williamson, they were all men. So I, again, which inspires me even more to create this book. So there's an, yeah. there's more women voices in that category. Um, but the ones that, that I do read, you know, I read Glennon Doyle recently, her untamed book, which I've loved. I mean, the, the number one person that I look up to is Oprah Winfrey, right? Like, just, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all, right? It's just like, it's such a given. So I mean, why, you know, I don't even know. She, like, I feel like everyone has that, that answer. Right. Oh, well, thanks for sharing some of your inspirations there. And yes, let's get your name up there on that list so we can kind of even out the playing field a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> can't wait for your book. Um, well, well, this about sums up the, the so-called business professional round here. Um, so I guess if you're up for it, let's do some quick, fun questions just kind of to get to know you, what you like to do and all that fun stuff. 100% up for it. All right. What's your favorite color? Purple just came up. So let's go with it. <laughs> Favorite place? Italy. Favorite movie? Oh, well, the one, see, I'm just going with it. These questions were not um, planned in advance. So Life is Beautiful, which is also an Italian movie. So there you go. Oh, sounds like you need to go there soon. <laughs> Good I'm Italy. waiting on it. Yes. <laughs> Favorite food? <laughs> I was like pizza and pasta. <laughs> I should have known that. <laughs> okay. How about the theme? <laughs> yeah. Favorite drink. Oh, um, Aperol spritz. Okay. Yeah. You're there. You need to be in Europe right now. Or wine. <laughs> yeah. Wine. Sorry. <laughs> do you have a favorite holiday? Christmas. I love Christmas. I really do. It's just family time. Mm -hmm. Favorite hobby. Interesting. Um, riding my bicycle. Oh, do you have like a Peloton bike or do you like ride around? I do have a Peloton, but I actually have a, like a road bike, not a road bike. Road bikes are for like cycle road cycling, but, um, just like a get around town bike. Okay. And I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you're yeah. also saving the earth. So thank you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> While you're doing that, yeah. um, podcasts, audiobooks, or YouTube for learning. Yep. Um, mostly actual books. <laughs> and then the one podcast that I listen to often is called Mind Valley. Um, the host is called Vishen Lakiani. He's out of Malaysia or now somewhere else. But um, but anyway, he then has all these guests on his podcast that are like experts in all these different fields. So I love learning. Love it. Mm -hmm. love it. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Let's see. Dress or pants? Pants. Would you rather swim in the ocean or jump off a plane skydiving? Oh, I did skydiving and it scared the hell out of me and I would never want to do it again. So let's go with swim in the ocean. Okay. <laughs> I actually loved it. I, I would love did to you? do it again. Yeah. It, it definitely scary to the point where they're like, okay, you got to move. And I'm like, I'm not moving. And then the guy just like pushed me out. <laughs> then it was yeah. liberating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It scared me pretty bad. All right. So what do you like to do in your spare time these days? Um, I read, I walk down to the ocean. I live about a mile from the ocean in Santa Monica, which I feel so blessed and lucky, especially when there's so many like fires in the state right now. I just feel so really, truly grateful to live where I live. So I get outside and take it and take advantage of it as much as possible. Oh, do you have any good luck charms that you take with you? Um, I just took it off. Oh. which is so crazy, but I have a flamingo on, a on a, on my necklace. And the flamingo is a long story that reminds me of my dad. So my dad is always with me. Um, I know he's always with me. Um, but the flamingo is a story that how he kind of appeared shortly after his death in the, like he appeared as like in a flamingo way, if that makes sense. There's hey, um, leading to next, what are, what are you most proud of at this moment? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a interesting question right before the pandemic even started because a, a book has been something I've been wanting to do for 15 years, but then, you know, on what, and then the hook and trying to get it all together. So when then, when lockdown happened, I was essentially committed to myself that I was going to sit down and write this book proposal and finish it. And if, 
again, if you don't know what that looks like to my book proposal was 80 pages long. So it's a full outline of what this book is going to be and, you know, finally getting it done and then getting an agent and now getting a publishing deal, I think has been one of the hardest things that I've done. Oh, texting or talking on the phone? Talking. Favorite day of the week? Um, I think that's a good question. Sundays are really nice. Favorite I like day. them all, to be oh. honest. Yeah. Because you kind of set your schedule. Yeah. You it, right. So yeah. Um, favorite junk food, if you have one. Mm-hmm. Chocolate. Um, Jenny's ice cream. If you've ever had Jenny's. No. Ooh. Gotta try What's your favorite flavor? Oh, I don't know. Brambleberry crisp. They have so many oh. that. Yeah. But that one is really good. Okay. I'm like gonna what's have- a brambleberry who even knows. I know what that's, that's what I was thinking. I was like, that sounds amazing. Whatever berry word yeah. you've thrown in there. That sounds amazing. <laughs> All right. And ending lastly here is what's your favorite childhood TV show? Facts of life is what just came to me. Wow. I loved it. Um, I could sit there for hours and watch all those like they were high, probably in high school, right at the time in a boarding school, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Um, so like looking up to them and just, I loved it. Oh, I love that. All right. I'm gonna throw in one more just cause I'm having yep. fun with you. Yep. Polka dots or stripes? Um, I'm a stripes person. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I guess for last here, are there any final words you want to share with anyone out there? Um, my final words would be to remember that all the power, all the strength, all the confidence that you need is already within you. Just be brave enough to tap into it. So that me, whatever that looks like in your life, right? Putting yourself out there, starting the side hustle, starting the podcast, um, whatever, whatever has been holding you back, you know, go and just do that thing, even small, little, consistent um, actions each day will eventually lead up to, to something major and awesome. Oh, thank you for that beautiful message and that empower, empowering message, actually, and encouraging <laughs> everyone out there. So with that in mind, everyone, if you want to reach out to Jennifer here, I'm going to have her um, say her website again, so that way everyone can go check it out. Uh, when's the best way to reach you? JenniferCassetta.com. Or on Instagram, I'm at Jen Cassetta, two N's, two S's, two T's. Sounds great. Well, thanks everyone for listening today. And Jennifer, thank you so much again. It's been a real pleasure having you on. And we hope to see you, you know, jet setting around the world and doing all these speaking engagements that I keep seeing you doing. So keep it up. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, everyone.